Va con ustedes. So, hello, my name is Spencer Allman. It is an absolute pleasure to be here, and it's definitely a pleasure to discuss our customer success story overview. So, what basically have you guys been doing then with the WebTrack solution and with the WebTrack suite? This is basically what we're going to be talking about for the next few minutes. This is then what has been happening as we've been transitioning from analytics over then to the suite, the MP marketing automation. We're now talking about revenue increases, conversion rate increases, increasing then click-through rates, conversion leads, newsletter signups. What we're then seeing is there's an evolution. With WebTrack and the products, with our solutions, is that we really are working to drive your profit. Now let's jump into how this is then happening with our customers. Take then some concrete examples. So with DevShop increasing the uh, Facebook campaign to some of their CR, their conversion rate, the challenge that we then have is how to personalize the shopping experience based on the uh, marketing channel, just to take a segment of your users, even ones that you don't necessarily know, just when they come to your website, is it even possible to customize the experience or should they just get a generic landing page. The solution is, just by using even the refer, you can use the media code, and say, okay, these users, it's not just all the users that are coming to, to the website or coming to a specific landing page, but the ones that Facebook, maybe they are a bit different. Maybe they act a bit differently. What if we were to just take that segment and say, okay, these, what if we can personalize then what they actually then see and the products that are then recommended. So you give them recommendations of just the other products that other Facebook users or people coming from Facebook have actually then seen and been purchasing. With just that simple cut, that simple segment of the traffic, and then doing the rate goes on it, we then see a very nice impact. So a simple, simple impact, a simple campaign that's done, and you see a conversion rate jump, you can see then a revenue jump for the traffic, and you can see then a decrease in the bounce rate, meaning increase in engagement, increasing then the relevancy of that traffic. We take then another example of what's, what's then happening with the solution. Take for a publisher. So for Wikimedia, they're able to increase their subscriptions and also then curb the abandonment rate, so of people, people then leaving the website. So with Wikimedia, we try to then increase the amount of subscriptions that they have for a digital edition. Paid content, purchase then uh, an edition subscription for a few months, three months, six months, 12 months, and not everyone was purchasing the subscription. Some people would start the process and then they would abandon the process. So what was then tried with the WebTrack suite? What was tried is, when people are actually then in the middle of the checkout, they give the intent to exit, is to then offer those users then the opportunity to get just a free edition. So they can then try out the product for free. What we then saw with this is that the amount of subscriptions increased. There was an almost 10% increase in the conversion rate for the subscriptions, and that there was then a higher, higher click-through rate actually then through, through this process. So what's nice also about this one is that an exit intent is from the name. Exit intent means that they are intending to leave. They're about to exit. So you're about to get zero from them. So these guys are really doing then a save. So you're turning them into nothing into something. You get someone to subscribe to, to your service and you open up then a new, new channel because they're subscribing. You then have email, you can send them uh, newsletters and you can then work on getting the sale at least the next, the next time. Another example of what's happening with Computer Universe, so another e-commerce example, is turning, again, abandoned, also then, this time, not into additions or subscriptions for a paywall, but into a newsletter subscription. 
or we then saw here, where people are about to leave the website. Here, not necessarily during a checkout process, but it could be you know, at any time. Maybe you want to define a certain number of page impressions, so not just a bounce, but when people are about to then leave the website without purchase anything, is to then give them the cue, hey, before you go, at least sign up for the newsletter, and then with the Webtrack solution, they can have different options that they then offer. You can offer them a newsletter, you can even offer, as in this case, then a certain discount, discount code on a future purchase that happens. And what we then saw with this is that during the time frame that we were running this test, is that we saw then a nice jump, in this case, 200% of the registration rate for the newsletter. Moving then to another example, email channel, newsletter channel, uh, AXA Healthkeeper, so insurance, is that we're able to then to increase the newsletter engagement rate. So actually then from the email news box back into, back into AXA, they, the challenge basically of people are no longer on the website, they have AXA that has an email system, newsletters are going out, there's then a certain click-through rate on those and then a certain engagement rate then after that. We wanted to then increase that engagement rate. Did it? Again, what we see with a lot of our customers, and what's nice then about some of these examples is when you send an email then out to everyone, there's then a lot of opportunity for improvements and you can actually work then a lot with uh, low-hanging fruit just by creating that first segment, that first cut on your data. So instead of just sending out a newsletter to everyone, sending in the same newsletter to everyone, what you then see in this example is using all the customer behavioral data, noticing what pages customers have seen, maybe the content groups that they had clicked on, or particular tags that they had seen. So when they had seen a particular interest, so in this case, they used in the running newsletter. So customers, users, that had previously clicked on health content, running content, is that they then receive a newsletter just for and just targeted to, to runners. When they then did just that simple segmentation, is that the, the click-through rate on the newsletters increased by a very nice by a very nice jump for that campaign of 60%. Another example, this one coming also from finance, but from a bank. <clears throat> what you then see is for new account process. Some processes can be rather quick. In e-commerce, they can be quick. <coughs> in banking, they can be quick when it comes to just to please contact me. Some of them can be rather long. If there's a long process, and also in the financial industry, you may have other, other limitations in terms of content that can be shown, things like that, but there are still things you can do to help the customers get through to what, if you think about it in your sense, what you really want, which is you, you do want them to convert. So, and you do want them to actually sign up for your product or to finish the form so that you can actually then content, contact them. But even for a bank where you're much more restricted, there are still things that, that you can do. Your not, hands are not entirely tied. So, this example, we have a long application process many steps, and just a simple thing of <clears throat> from going from one page to another, if the process was then going to be a long one, it's just a friendly reminder that, hey, stay with us, you're almost, you're almost done, and by the way, we're then a trusted, we're then a trusted source, so that you then can reinforce the customer. <coughs> there's no direct sale, there's no offer of uh, discount or anything like that, you have to have to push or sell other products, but you can actually do a lot of what we actually saw, just by this, just a little, just contact while the customer is going through this, that we actually had an uplift in the amount of applications that were submitted. It was a good 30%, 30% increase in that, and also a nice double digit increase in the number of conversions that, that the bank then had to a lead. With these examples, what we're more than seeing so we were working then with, with the solution, we were working then with you guys on this for the last many, many months, and we're really only talking, even with these examples, of what customers are actually doing then with the solution, is really just the tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg in a couple of senses. In one sense, from what, particularly what a lot of these examples are doing is, 
when you have your entire visitor set, whether it's 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million people, users, visitors, is even as we see Def Shop with the Facebook campaign or the runner newsletter, is just taking that one cut, that one segment, is at the beginning, is that you can actually then hit a very nice improvement in the performance of a sign for a newsletter or in actual, in actual purchases. In that one sense, in terms of the, the cases that we're seeing, is that there's been just a lot of cool stuff that can then happen, and a lot of more cool stuff that we can then be doing with all of this. In that sense, it's a tip of the iceberg. The other sense that is the tip of the iceberg is if you look at the iceberg, then as your data that you already have, you know, and it's not even just the, the, the data you, that you have now, but literally when you look at then the months, and then for some of you in the room, then the years of data that you then have with WebTrack and your analytics data, is you have then a huge source of basically potential of all this user intent, what people have been looking at, what they've been buying, what they have been looking at and then not buying, is that you have all of that at your, at your fingertips, that now with the solutions that, that are available and that we're offering, that you can really take advantage of. Just want to talk in a minute, more than a minute, moment then about what this actually then means. So for one, is that we're having then a shift that's happening in, in digital analytics. For one, uh, it's probably actually a good point. I will take a minute actually to introduce myself at this point. So I've been now with WebTrack for seven years. It was seven years ago, actually, when I started, that we actually then brought Q3 onto the market. So the raw data, and we were very much into analytics. Now what we're experiencing is now seven years later, so it's very exciting for the, for the products. We're still talking about analytics. We still have an analytics tool, analytics solution, but it's evolving literally in front of our, not just our eyes, but we're actually then than living in. And one thing that we're then experiencing then with the suite, with DMP, with marketing, with the marketing automation, is that analytics it and our jobs are becoming then a profit center. Yeah? The days of she's the person with the login, they have the tools, data nerd, data geek, to show us the reports, show us the dashboards, talk about announcements and like that, is that those days are quickly coming to an end. Digital analytics is becoming a profit center, and that the data itself is becoming a profit center. And there have been other, other presentations then today that have hit upon that point very well. When we have these solutions that we then do, when you can then get these types of results, increasing conversion rates, increasing revenue, driving down, down costs, here's a typical maturity model that you've probably seen then with other uh, in other presentations and blogs and things like that. You go from data collection, you then report on data, analysis, and then really then with the tools we have, you can really start to get into insights, actions, and then the focus on, on profit. When we look at then today, yesterday, we've been doing analytics, say in our jobs for the last years, whether you've been in it for six months or you've been in it for five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, is that we often spend a lot of our time on data collection and reporting. If we're lucky, we get to spend some time doing an analysis and not supposed to be able to read it, but that you actually do spend then a little bit of time on action and profit. And that this is how our teams, even for companies that have bigger teams, it can sometimes still be squeezed into this, into this time allocation is that with the solutions that we're then offering, where you can really then drive your profit, is that we want to be able to, to shift that. Is that for the analysts, is that we can really then spend our time doing then action and profit. And that if it doesn't drive profit, if it's not, nothing that's really going to be at some point, not tie your project then to increasing revenues or driving down the cost, <coughs> then you have to then bring into question should we actually be doing this? Does this need to be tagged? And particularly where time can be wasted is when it comes to the reporting and the analysis steps. Now, before you get dragged into a conversation of understanding about all the Facebook likes and why you can get more Facebook likes and not get more Facebook likes, or if the internal search is working, if it's not working, is to make sure that 
time you're actually then spending is that it's actually then moving towards something that you can act on, and something you can act on that will help make the company, will make the company more money, you know, driving up revenues or decreasing, decreasing the costs. Another way, in terms of how this, how then the mindset change is happening, if we just take just a, you know an example. We still deal, we talk to them with a lot of customers that are, want to get into this direction, but we still have then a lot of cases where people are dealing with just doing implementation, getting in reports, and just trying to analyze, but analyzing of an academic sense of, oh, it's nice to know that our users are doing this without then the tie to an insight, that leads to an action, leads to a profit. Is that when it comes to our day-to-day -day work of thinking if we have then a you know, company makes 10 million, 10 million euros, if we have an average basket of 80 euros, is if as an analyst or the manager of a team, right, if we can increase this by just 1%, if we can increase that by 1%, we then have a jump of 100,000 euros of revenue, and that with that revenue, and this goes back to the point of, of the profit center, is that with the data now, then with also the, the, the solutions now, what people are then doing already today with analytics, the DMP, and marketing automation, is that you can actually justify also on a profit center basis of if we just had a person who was really working to figure out how can we then take that Facebook campaign further. If you're then active, if you're doing then a running campaign, how can we then do that more? We would do more if we just had another resource. Or you can justify then the results for another resource because you can actually then measure how many more conversions and how much in conversions are we actually then bringing. So you can actually then basically justify growing out the team. It is becoming then a profit center with with digital analytics. So then I leave you leave you with this is that it's now 2016 is literally then what we're experiencing. You can feel it coming out of 2015, and then now is that we're seeing, we're seeing this change. Is that we need to rethink then the purpose of what we're doing with our data and how we're doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. And now yeah, I look forward in the coming in months to you writing the new customer success stories, then with you guys and all the cool things that you guys are doing with, with the suite and with the products. So thank you very much.